Science is evolving and advancing with each passing day. One day, Detective Mayhul was watching TV at home. Suddenly a scientist appears on the screen and says, There will definitely be a day when you will be able to touch and taste anything you want at the comfort of your home. The next day, the same scientist is found dead at his house. Detective Mayhul immediately reaches the crime scene. He was convinced that the scientist had been murdered. But why? Can you tell? Let us know in the comments. Someone slit the scientist's wrist and left the blade in his palm to portray a suicide. But in haste, the murderer made a mistake. They left the blade in the wrong palm. Mayhul carefully examines the fingerprints on the blade and clicks photographs of the dead body. He then sends the corpse for postmortem to Dr. Sanjana. Soon Dr. Sanjana calls Mayhul to inform him that the scientist had been killed six hours ago. This means that the scientist was killed at night itself. He began searching and scanning the house but fails to find any clue. He decides to go through the pictures of the dead body and here was his light bulb moment. He instantly understands that the scientist was not killed in the house. He had been murdered somewhere else and his body was dumped here later. But can you tell how did Mayhul figure this out? Although the scientist's wrist is slit in the image, not one drop of blood can be seen on the floor. How can this be possible? This is how Mayhul understands that the scientist was murdered somewhere else and his body was dumped here to avoid disclosing the location. Hmm. Interesting. Mayhul soon reaches the scientist's lab. He has to solve a science question to open the door and enable access to all equipment. Can you tell the answer to this question? Who made the world's first television? Option A. Thompson. Option B. Einstein. Option C. John Logi Baird. And option D. Dr. Smith. Let us know your answer by commenting. The answer to this is J.L. Baird. And clicks on the option. The gates open and Mayhul enters the lab. He was shocked to see what was kept inside. He saw TV sets of all types, sizes, and generations stored carefully. This means that the scientist has done extensive research on TVs. He begins scanning the whole lab and he finds some fingerprints. He sends them to Dr. Sanjana immediately. He comes across pools of blood in the lab and sends their samples to Dr. Sanjana too. He is also able to hunt down the scientist's personal computer. He switches the computer on and goes through its content. The scientist was trying to develop a technology through which one could obtain anything they wanted through the screen of a TV. He named it Magical TV. After reading the scientist's research documents, Mayhul was astonished. The scientist was unbelievably close to actually developing the technology. In fact, it would be no surprise if the scientist had already succeeded. What if the scientist was killed for this very reason? Just then, Mayhul receives a call from Dr. Sanjana. She informs him that the blood sample from the lab matches with the scientist's blood and the fingerprints found at the lab match that of the blade. The scientist was murdered in the lab and the fingerprints surely belonged to the murderer. Right at that moment, Mayhul receives a call. Another scientist had committed suicide. He reaches the crime scene instantly. The scientist was hanging by a rope around his neck. Look at the image carefully, can you tell if this was a suicide or a murder? Let us know your answer in the comments. This was a murder. Although the scientist is hanging by a noose, there is no stool or chair under him. Which means that he did not hang by himself. Someone has murdered him and hung him there. He sends the scientist's fingerprints and dead body for postmortem to Dr. Sanjana. He leaves the crime scene and was lost in thought while driving when Dr. Sanjana calls him. She informs him that the fingerprints found on the murder blade matches the second scientist's fingerprints. This means that the second scientist killed the first scientist. If the first scientist was killed by the second one, then who killed the second scientist? My gut says that all of this ties up to the magical TV. I will have to get to the bottom of this soon. If the magical TV finds its way into the wrong hands, the damage might be irreversible. He soon receives a call from the wife of the second scientist and leaves to visit her. The wife tells Mayhul. My husband had constructed a secret lab in the basement of our house. 
He was working on the magical TV there. One day, before he succeeded, he told me. Soon, we will have everything we want. But he didn't live to see another day after that. Says the wife and starts bawling her eyes out. Mayhul instantly goes to the basement of the house, to the secret lab, the door was locked by a three-numbered password. Looking at the clues, can you guess the password? Let us know your answers in the comments below. The password will be 343. The first digit has to be multiplied by 1, the second, by 2, and the third, by 3. So, in the first number, 1 times 1 will be 1. 2 times 2 will be 4. And 3 times 3 will be 9. This is why the code is 149. Hence, for the answer, 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 3 is 3. So, the code is 343. Mayhul enters the password and steps into the lab. He sees that, just like the first scientist, the second scientist had also preserved TV sets of different types and generations. He opens the computer of the second scientist, but fails to find any clues. Suddenly, he notices a secret file that could only be opened by the fingerprints of the scientist. But now that the scientist is dead, how will Mayhul access the classified file? Can you guess? At the crime scene, Mayhul extracted the fingerprints of the scientist. He will carefully copy them on a glove and gain access to the file. He finds all the information about the magical TV. He realizes that the second scientist had sold the magical TV to a group of terrorists. They killed the scientist after obtaining the magical TV, so that their secret remains concealed. Soon, Mayhul receives a call from Alia. She informs him that a palace has been mysteriously constructed in the forest overnight. He instantly understands who would have constructed this palace. Can you guess? Think properly. Using the magical TV, the terrorists must have brought a palace to life. Mayhul immediately reaches the forest. Upon meeting Alia there. Alia, I think I can take it from here. You don't need to tag along. He ignores her and walks into the palace. He finds the terrorists fast asleep. They must have procured a lot of food through the magical TV, had a big meal and passed out. As Mayhul goes to pick up the magical TV and escape, a terrorist knocks him out with a bat. Then came Alia to the rescue. She bangs the terrorist with a bat and floors him to the ground. She uses the magical TV to get a glass of water and sprinkles some water on Mayhul's face. The commotion wakes up the rest of the terrorists. They start firing on Detective Mayhul and Alia. Alia acquires a large shield from the magical TV and they save themselves from the bullets. Mayhul then brings a container of sleeping gas to life that puts all the bad guys to sleep instantly. The police arrives and arrests all the terrorists shortly and the magical TV is destroyed. The case was officially solved. But who do you think saved the day? Alia or Mayhul? Let us know in the comments. In the city's biggest prison, an inmate was found dead. Detective Mayhul arrives at the crime scene to investigate the matter. Mayhul finds the victim lying on the floor, with a pistol in his hand. He instantly figures out that this was not a suicide, but a murder. How? Can you guess? This is a murder, because the victim is holding a gun in his right hand. Whereas, the injury is on the left side of his head. This means that someone murdered this man and left the gun in his hand. But, how did he manage to get a pistol inside a jail? Interesting. Very interesting. Mayhul then checks the CCTV footage but fails to find anything suspicious. Nobody entered or exited the premises of the jail. Nobody even came near the cell of the victim. Then who killed this man? Interesting. Very interesting. Mayhul copies the fingerprints found on the gun and sends a sample to Dr. Sanjana. Just then, he receives a call. One more inmate had been found dead in another prison of the city. Mayhul rushes to the crime scene immediately. Upon reaching, he finds the victim had been stabbed and was lying dead on the floor. But here, interestingly, the victim was locked in with two other prisoners. Looking at the dead body, can you guess if it was a murder or a suicide?
The man is stabbed in the back. This means that he didn't do it himself. This was a murder. Mehul copies the fingerprints on the knife and sends it to Dr. Sanjana. He then begins to interrogate the victim's two cellmates. Tell me everything you know about the murder. Sir, there was no knife at night. When we woke up in the morning, we found him dead. We haven't done anything. Next, Mayhul checks the CCTV footage of the victim's cell, but does not find anything suspicious. Just like the last incident. How are these murders happening? These cases just don't make sense. Mayhul makes his way to the jailer. Did anyone come inside or near the victim's cell? I did not see anybody but the lock of the door is broken, which means someone definitely breached the gates. Mayhul then receives a call from Dr. Sanjana. She informs him that the fingerprints found on the gun and the fingerprints found on the knife match each other perfectly. How could this be possible? The same murderer in two different jails. How did they manage to break inside? And why weren't they captured on the CCTV? Mayhul checks the background and biodata of both the victims. He finds out that both these victims had murdered their wives. And they had been sentenced to life imprisonment for this crime. Just then, Mayhul receives a call from a third prison. Yet another prisoner was found dead. This victim was also sentenced to life imprisonment and had murdered his brother. There was only one prison in the city which had not reported of any such incidents. Mayhul fastens his seatbelt and rushes to that jail immediately. He walks up to the jailer of that prison. I am certain that a murder will be attempted in your jail tonight. I need to know the current number of prisoners here. The jailer tells Mayhul that there were eight inmates in the prison and shows him their images. Mayhul instantly figures out the next victim of the gruesome murderer. Can you guess? Let us know your answer in the comments below. The murderer was only targeting prisoners who had killed other people. Out of these eight inmates, only one was a murderer. Which means that he was the next prey. Mayhul asks the jailer to double the security around the prison. Every person entering or exiting the prison should be thoroughly frisked. And you guys, subscribe to our channel and motivate me and my team to bring all the bad guys to justice. Soon, the night sky appears, and Mayhul was alert as a bird. As the clock strikes 12, he starts hearing noises from the cells. As if someone opened the gate. Who is there? Mayhul looks inside the cells, but he doesn't see anyone. He runs towards the gate and finds the guard, unconscious, lying on the ground. This means that someone has already broken into the premises. I have to rush to the cells of the prisoners, immediately. Mayhul reaches near the cell in which he had hidden the prisoner who had been sentenced to life imprisonment. By looking at this image, can you guess in which room is the prisoner hidden? A or B? Let us know in the comments below. CCTV cameras are attached to room B, which means the prisoner is hiding here. Mayhul must have installed cameras here to catch hold of the murderer. Suddenly, an invisible supernatural element floats near Mayhul and ties his arms at the back. It also shuts Mayhul's mouth with a tape. Then, it breaks the lock of the cell and proceeds inside. Mayhul couldn't believe his eyes. Within a minute, Mayhul senses the supernatural element coming out of the prisoner's cell after brutally murdering him. Now the question arises, how did the invisible element know that the prisoner was hidden in this cell? Can you guess? Mayhul made a mistake. As soon as he heard a noise, without giving a second thought, he rushed and stood right in front of the victim's cell. This helped the invisible element in locating the prisoner. The morning sun rises and the police arrives at the crime scene. They find Mayhul and unties his arms from behind his back. Mayhul was lost in thought and was replaying yesterday's incident in his mind. How can this be possible? What was that supernatural element? How was it invisible and how did it escape? Suddenly, Mayhul gets a call from the police station. He rushes there at once. The inspector informs him that they ran the fingerprints copied from the gun and from the knife in their system. They found out that they belonged to a very infamous criminal mastermind, Rocky. But why is this Rocky invisible? And how? What mysterious powers has he obtained? 
and most importantly, why is he killing murderers who are in prison for life? According to the police records, Rocky lived in the city itself. The inspector hands over his address to Mehul. He reaches his house right away. Looks like this house is extremely old, but still, someone keeps visiting. Why does Mehul think so? Can you guess? Footsteps are visible near the door of the house. This means that someone enters and leaves the house regularly. Mayhul walks towards the house and stands by a window. I am sure Rocky enters and leaves through this window. Mayhul goes inside the house, it was spick and spanned from within. Looking at the way things were arranged in the house, Mayhul was sure that Rocky was inside but hiding. But how? How did Mayhul understand that Rocky was inside the house? Can you guess? Look at the table, a hot cup of tea is sitting there. Which means Rocky is within the house. I know you are here Rocky. Come forward, there is no point in hiding. Next second, Rocky appears in front of Detective Mayhul. How is this possible? How are you invisible to everyone? When it comes to Rocky, everything is possible. I have worked very hard to develop this scientific jacket which makes me disappear into thin air, as and when I please. Why did you kill those three prisoners? They were murderers. The court was unfair in sentencing them with life imprisonment. They didn't deserve to live. That's why, I sentenced them to death. Ten years ago, some people murdered my best friend, in my house, right in front of my eyes. Since then, I don't spare any killer. And the best part is, no one can catch me. As soon as Rocky says this, he disappears. Mayhul decides to meet scientist Paul Balea and rushes to his lab. To reach the scientist, he has to get past through this maze. Which path should Mayhul choose to get to the scientist? Can you guess? Let us know your answer in the comments. Path A reaches the scientist. Something like this. Mayhul chooses Patha and gets to the scientist. The scientist gives Mayhul a set of special goggles which will help them locate Rocky's shadow. Suddenly, Mayhul receives a call. The court has sentenced a murder to life imprisonment. He instantly understands that Rocky will surely try to kill the prisoner tonight. Mayhul pulls up his socks and is ready for the action. He reaches the jail and waits for Rocky, wearing the special goggles. As the clock strikes 12, Rocky's shadow is visible to Mayhul. Since Rocky is standing near the bulb, his shadow was large. Before he could move, Mayhul attacked him with a net trap and pins him down. With the help of the police, Mayhul takes off Rocky's jacket and surrenders him to the inspector. Case officially solved. Mayhul was watching the chaos on the TV. New York City has been ambushed by zombies. They were biting and chewing the flesh of humans and were turning them into zombies. If things go on like this, all humans will turn into zombies. I should do something. Just then, Mayhul receives a call from the police. They ask him to help them in terminating the zombies and restoring peace in the city. He buckles up and leaves in his car to fight them off. Mayhul notices that the city was filled with zombies. People were running haywire and things were getting out of control. Suddenly, some zombies appear in front of Mayhul's car. I can't run over them. They are still humans that have become zombies. I will have to scare them away instead. What should Mayhul do to drive the zombies away? Can you guess? Zombies are scared of fire. Mayhul has a lighter and a cloth in his car. He lights the cloth and frightens the zombies away. Mayhul drives forward and is lost in thought. How did these zombies infiltrate the city out of nowhere? At that moment, he comes across a school. He notices that several zombies were entering the building. There must be students in the school. I have to go inside and save them. But Detective Mayhul couldn't enter through the main door as it was packed with zombies. So, he tries to look for another way into the building. Suddenly, he catches sight of a long rope, suspended from the terrace. He starts climbing it and reaches the roof of the school. The door on the roof was locked. By looking at this image, can you guess the code to open this door? 
Let us know your answer in the comments below. Notice that a number has been assigned to each color. For example, tomato and apples are red and their coat is 4. Mango, banana and lemon are yellow and their coat is 5. Now, look at the cabbage, it is green and its coat is 3. Hence, the coat for Ladyfinger will also be 3, since it is green. Mayhul presses the number 3 and the door unlocks. As he proceeds into the building, he comes across an army of zombies scattered around the school. He rushes to find the students to bring them to safety. He finds some kids hiding in a room and notices some zombies walking towards that room from the other side of the corridor. I have to rescue the kids before these zombies get to them. Mayhul finds several stones near him. He picks them up and starts bombarding the zombies. The furious zombies start chasing Mayhul. His plan worked. He strategically takes them straight to the roof of the school and hides behind the door. He locks them out on the roof and quickly descends through the rope. Just then, he receives a call from scientist Bol Balea. He asks Mayhul to reach his lab immediately. Oh God! Has this scientist put the city in danger by another one of his otherworldly experiments? I should go and meet him without sparing a second. He rushes to Bol Balea's lab immediately. But, Mayhul has to solve a confusing maze to reach the scientist. By looking at this image, can you tell which route should Mayhul choose to get to the scientist? A, B, or C? Let us know your answer in the comments. Route A goes to the scientist. Somewhat like this. Mayhul chooses the correct path and reaches the scientist. In the lab, he sees a zombie on the scientist's experiment table. Paul Balea, are you responsible for this nuisance in the city? No. This time, it's the opposite. I have set out to save the city. I caught this zombie and was trying to study its behaviors. I was alarmed when I found out that this is not a real zombie. These are chemically generated and modified zombies, and they are spreading this chemical by biting humans. Interesting. But the question is, who is behind all this? Scientist, you have to make an antidote before the whole city turns into zombies. Till then, I'll try to expose the culprit. Mayhul leaves the lab. The biggest problem is that I cannot kill these zombies. All of them are humans, like me. They are just under the influence of a chemical. The task at hand is challenging. Subscribe to our channel to help me and my team in unearthing crimes and bringing bad guys to justice. Mayhul starts following the zombies. He observes that the zombies collectively move to the outskirts of the city in every eight hours. Interesting. Very interesting. He decides to follow the zombies. But, his car gets thronged by zombies from all the sides. They attack Mayhul's car and start mounting it slowly. Mayhul accelerates his car and keeps moving ahead. But it was too late. He misses the zombies moving towards the outskirts of the city. Soon, near a forest, he comes at a crossroads. He is able to see three roads. Looking at all three roads, which route do you think have the zombies taken? A, B, or C? Let us know your answer in the comments. Road B has animal footprints, this means the zombies haven't taken this route. Road A has only one set of footmarks. This means that the zombies have taken Road C. Mayhul moves ahead on Road C and stops in front of an old mansion. Through a broken window, he peeps inside the house, only to find a lab built inside. A zombie was sitting on a chair and other zombies were walking towards it. Soon, the zombie extracts a powder from its body and sprinkles it on all the other zombies. Interesting. The powder is the source of their power. This lab resembles that of scientist Jaikal. Is he to blame for all this chaos? But how? He is still behind bars. Mayhul waits for all the other zombies to leave. Then, he sneaks inside the mansion and puts a sack on the main zombie to kidnap him. He takes him directly to scientist Bol Balea's lab. He then narrates everything he saw at the mansion and about the special zombie powder. I think, with the help of this zombie, I'll be able to formulate an antidote. Mayhul leaves the zombie in the scientist's custody and exits the lab. He decides to pay scientist Jaikal a visit in prison. He reaches the jail and sees Jaikal in his cell. 
If Jaikal is here, then who is behind all this? Just then, it dawns upon Mehul. This wasn't the real Jaikal. But how? Can you guess? Look at the swarm of flies around Jaikal. They appear to be moving through his body. How can this be possible? This was a hologram of Jaikal. Mehul steps inside the cell to confirm if his suspicion was true. It was. This means that Jaikal is definitely responsible for everything happening in the city. I have to go back to the lab and catch hold of him. Mehul reaches Jaikal's lab. This time he witnesses another zombie, extracting a powder from its body and sprinkling it on the others. Interesting. The zombie that I kidnapped has been replaced by another zombie. This means there's no point in terminating these ones. I have to capture Jaikal to put an end to all this. Mayhul goes further into the lab and tries to look for a hidden passage. Suddenly, he comes across a secret doorway. Look at this image properly, let's see if you can spot the secret door. Look at this arrow, this seems like an indication to slide. This means that the wall can be slid to open and is actually a door. Mayhul slides the wall and finds a covert room. As he takes a step forward, he spots Jaikal. He notices several zombies stored in huge machines. Jaikal was busy experimenting on each one of them. I am certain that these machines are developing the main zombies, who sprinkle the special powder on all the other zombies. I have to destroy it. Mayhul determinedly walks inside the lab. And scientist Jaikal catches sight of him. He instantly puts the zombies to work, who start chasing Mayhul. Mayhul tries to escape but he loses balance and trips. He was hurt and started bleeding. The zombie attacks Mayhul and bites him. Detective Mayhul turns into a zombie too. Now try and save the city. All zombies then move towards the city. By this time, scientist Bulbulaya had successfully formulated an antidote. But, he was unable to contact Mayhul. Just then, he spots five zombies in front of him. He instantly figures out that Mayhul is one of them. But how? Can you guess? The fourth zombie is Mayhul. He is wearing Mayhul's signature outfit. The scientist moves closer to the fourth zombie and sprinkles the antidote on him. The zombie turns back into Mayhul. Summon a helicopter and spray this antidote across the city. Till then, I will take care of scientist Jaikal. With the help of the helicopter, Bulbulea scatters the antidote throughout the city. All the zombies turn back into humans. By this time, Mayhul had destroyed all the machines in Jaikal's lab and arrested him. Detective Mayhul, yet again, managed to save the city. But wait logical army, Mayhul mission was not completed yet. Because, some terrorists have hijacked a plane and have taken everyone hostage. No one is aware of their motives and plans. Detective Mayhul happened to see this news on his TV. He engines his car and rushes to the airport immediately. There, he is informed that Airbus 256 which was scheduled to leave at 2 p.m. from London to reach Paris, had been hijacked at gunpoint. But the question remained that how did the gun reach the flight, in spite of such tight security on the airport? I'm sure that someone from the airport authority is involved in this hijack. Mayhul soon watches the footage of the passenger luggage scan of Airbus 256. He grew suspicious of one footage, but which one and why? Can you guess? Think and let me know your answer in the comments. This bag seems to belong to a lady. But then why does it have a man's shoe? That too just one? I'm sure it was used to hide the gun. No one reported this, which means someone from the security is also involved in this crime. Mayhul then goes through some more random footage of the airport and instantly spots the hijacker. But how? Can you guess? Look at this picture carefully, a man is carrying a lady's bag. It is the same blue bag which had a solitary men's shoe in it. But why would a man carry a lady's bag? This is what ticked Mayhul off. This man is going towards gate 3. I'll have to interrogate the security team on the gate. 
He reaches the gate and starts questioning the officers there. There was three officials present at that moment. The first one says, Sir I was very alert. I couldn't have missed the gun at any cost. The next one says, Sir if I came across just one shoe, I would have seen through it immediately. The last one says, Sir I wasn't in my best health, so I had taken a break to relax. Mehul immediately understands which one of them was the culprit. But how? Can you guess? The second security officer is lying. Mehul asks him. How did you know that there was only one shoe in the back? This means that you noticed it and still let the man enter with a gun. Mehul catches hold of him immediately. The man then tells him that he wasn't aware that the plane was going to be hijacked. He did as he was told, for money. Just then, another official walks up to Mehul and hands him a note saying that it fell out of the hijacker's pocket. Something was scribbled on it using coded letters, but it was hard to decipher. Mehul looks at the paper carefully. Can you help him crack this code? If you look at these letters in the mirror, it will read out the words boss escape. This means they've hijacked this plane in order to save their boss. But who could it be? Suddenly, a video message from the terrorist group starts playing on all screens around. Free our boss Osama al hack or else we will kill all the hostages one by one. I'll have to do something quick. I don't have much time to save the hostages. Osama cannot be relieved. He is too dangerous to be out in the world. Mehul then thinks of asking scientist Bul Balea for help. He engines his car and leaves for the scientist's lab. Bul Balea had created a maze to reach him. By looking at it, can you guess which route goes to him? A, B, or C? Think and let me know your answer in the comments below. Ruta reaches the scientist, somewhat like this. Mehul chooses the correct road and arrives at the scientist's lab. He narrates the tale of the hijack and Boss Osama to Bul Balea. The scientist then tells Mehul about the clone machine. When the machine is placed in front of a person, the person standing inside the machine becomes their clone. This means we can make Osama's clone using this machine and send him inside the plane. But the question is, who will take such a big risk? Mehul then decides that he should take up this responsibility. He immediately reaches the prison where Osama was in. He places the machine in front of him and goes inside the machine himself. The machine works and Mehul turns into Osama. He steps out of the machine looking exactly like terrorist Osama. He then turns to a police officer and says, Inform the hijackers that we are ready to let go of Osama. The hijacks receive the intel and decide on landing the aircraft in London. Mehul leaves for the airport as Osama, with some police officers. Look at these four roads. Which one do you think Mehul should choose? A, B, C, or D? Think and let me know your answer in the comments below. Road A is full of traffic, B has large trucks, which can't be overtaken. Even though C has less cars, but since they're approaching from the opposite direction, Mehul cannot go here. Hence, Road D is the best option. Mehul picks the correct route and reaches the airport. By this time, the terrorists had also landed the flight at the London airport. They had also demanded a private plane to be able to flee away with their boss Osama. The authorities had readied the same for them. The police handcuffs his hands at the back and the news is all over the television channels. Osama was officially being freed. Mehul is escorted near the plane and his handcuffs are unlocked. The hijackers are convinced that it was Osama. As he walks towards the entrance of the airplane, a terrorist yells out loud. What is our secret code? Mehul is left at a loss of words and is in deep thought. Just then, he recalls the secret code he found on the paper. Can you recall too? The code was boss escape. Mehul immediately yells in Osama's voice. Boss escape. The hijackers are over the moon hearing these words come out of Osama's mouth. They instantly guide him into the private plane. As soon as Mehul reaches the flight, the terrorists let go of the hostages. 
Without wasting a second, they descend from the aircraft and run towards the airport. Soon, Mehul pulls out a handkerchief from his pocket and uses it to render a terrorist nearby, unconscious. He then disembarks and renders another terrorist unconscious. Since he couldn't spot any other hijacker around him, he is engrossed in thought. There should be three hijackers instead of two. Why did Mehul think so? Notice that the terrorist who smuggled the guns inside the aircraft cannot be seen here. I'm sure that he escaped with the hostages. I'll have to catch him before he creates more ruckus. Mehul immediately gets off the plane and reaches the airport. He is able to spot the missing hijacker almost instantly. If you want to stay alive, surrender yourself to the police at once. The hijacker pulls out a gun from his pocket and grabs a little girl beside him. Leave our boss or watch her die. Mehul quickly dials scientist Bull Balea. Make multiple clones of Osama. Make sure that they are identical to each other, but a little different from the real one. Soon, five of Osama's clones reach the London airport. Mehul asks the terrorist to identify his boss out of the clones. The hijacker is left speechless and extremely confused. Can you guess which one of these is the real Osama? A, B, C, D, or E? Think carefully and let me know your answer in the comments. Person D is the real Osama. Notice that he's not wearing a watch, whereas all the others are. Recall that Mehul had told the scientist to keep something different. Taking advantage of the hijacker's inattentiveness, Mehul jumps in the air and kicks his gun to the floor. He then punches him hard and he falls to the ground too. He then arrests him immediately. Case solved. Detective Mehul rocks. On next day in the city, an extremely precious and priceless necklace has been stolen from the museum. The manager comes in running to the crime scene and calls Detective Mayhul for help. He then informs Mayhul. The necklace was worth millions of dollars. It was within tight security but someone still managed to steal it. Mayhul then watches the CCTV footage of people arriving and leaving the museum. He was suspicious of two of them. One was with people arriving and the other was with people leaving. By looking at them, can you guess what Mayhul found to be fishy? The outfits and shoes of these two people look the same, but their hairstyle is different. It is obvious that this isn't a real girl but a man with a wig. He must be the robber. Mayhul examined the footage even further. The necklace is not the only thing that has been stolen. Look at these images carefully and guess why Mayhul thought so. Think and let me know your answer in the comments. Why is the frame out of place? The necklace was placed at a distance from it, then how did it move? Mayhul walks up to the wall to remove the frame and discovers an empty space. The manager then tells Mayhul. There used to be a map placed here. It wasn't of any use. I wonder why anyone would steal it. It leads to a treasure chest, but since the path is extremely difficult and confusing, no one has been able to reach it. The robbers weren't here to steal the necklace, but to get their hands on this map. The necklace was just a distraction. The manager informs Mayhul that he has a copy of the map and hands it over to Mayhul. There are five stages that you have to cross to reach the treasure. No one has been able to cross even a single stage. It seems to be impossible. Interesting. Very interesting. I'll have to reach there before the robbers. Mayhul looks at the map carefully. He has to get past the forest first, or he will find the route to the next stage. He engines his car and leaves for the location immediately. It is said that the forest is extremely dangerous and difficult to get through. He will have to find a tree with rainbow-colored fruits on it. He will find the road ahead, from on top of the tree. Soon, Mayhul is able to find four such trees. But which one does he have to climb? Can you guess? The first three trees seem to be dangerous. Notice that the fourth tree has footprints on it. There is mud on the ground, due to which there are footmarks on the trunk of the tree. I'm sure that the robber has managed to cross this stage. He quickly climbs up the tree and views ahead from the apex. 
He was able to see three routes from there. By looking at these, can you guess which one leads to the caves? Choosing the wrong route could be the reason of Mayhul's death. So think carefully, is it A, B, or C? Route B goes to the caves, somewhat like this. He picks the correct route and moves ahead in the forest. Crossing the jungle, he finally reaches in front of the caves. It was dampy and muddy out the caves, but he persists and walks inside them. Just then, Mayhul is greeted by a thought. Can you guess what could it be? The mud is causing footprints to form on the ground. But then where are the robbers' footprints? Why aren't they here? Interesting. Very, very interesting. Suddenly, a big cage falls on top of Mayhul, trapping him inside. It was filled with scorpions, who were crawling towards Mayhul. He will have to open the cage as soon as possible to save himself. Notice that there are buttons of four colors on the door of the cage. Black, white, red, and yellow. A rainbow and a paintbrush is drawn as a hint. By looking at the clues, can you guess which button should be pressed? If I mix the paints of all rainbow colors, I'll get black. This means black button should be pressed. He clicks on the black button and manages to open the cage door. He comes out of the cage and looks at the map again. He realizes that he has to look for a river after coming out of the cave. He walks towards the opening and is able to spot a river. There was a stone bridge in the middle of the river, and the stones had numerous fruits drawn on them. Mayhul jumps on stones mango, watermelon, guava, and papaya. Now he has to jump on only one stone, out of banana and orange. If he steps on the wrong one, he will drown in water. Notice that all fruits have seeds, except the bananas. This means he has to jump on the orange. He steps on the correct stone and moves further. Soon, Mayhul comes across large mountains. He begins to climb them but they were quite slippery. They were 100 meters in height. Mayhul was able to climb 4 meters every second, but slipped down by 3 meters in the next second. This means that he was able to climb only 1 meter in 2 seconds. Can you tell how many seconds will Mayhul require to reach on top of the 100 meter mountain? Mayhul will need 193 seconds. Two seconds for every one meter. This means he will reach 96 meters in 192 seconds. When he climbs another four meters in the next one second, he will cross the mountain and won't slide down. Mayhul finally reaches the top and sees that there were two caves to move further. One of them was closed using a giant gate, while the other one wasn't. By looking at these can you guess which is the correct one? It's obvious. The cave with the treasure cannot be left open, hence it's the one on the right. Yet, Mayhul goes inside the cave on the left. But why? Can you guess? The robber was unable to cross this difficult map. His footsteps weren't there near the cave, but I stopped them on the tree. This means he was ahead of me initially, but then he was behind me. He was using me to get to the treasure. Hence, Mayhul decides to go inside the wrong cave to trick the robber. There was a chest full of gold and silver jewelry. All have seemed extremely expensive and precious. Interesting. This must be the fake treasure. Just then, the robber sneaks up from behind and knocks Mayhul out using a wooden stick. He walks towards the treasure to steal it, but suddenly a big cage falls on him. He is trapped inside and his surroundings light up on fire. Obtaining this treasure is not easy. Mayhul comes out of the wrong cave and walks inside the right one. He comes across another enormous gate which was locked using a code. Some hints to open the cave were scribbled on the walls of the cave. By looking at them, can you guess the code? In the first figure, there are four intersection points and thus the value is 4. There are 2 in the second one and 5 in the third one. 
Since there are 5 intersection points in the last figure, the code will be 5. He presses the button 5 and manages to open the door. He finds a lot of priceless treasure inside and calls for the police with a helicopter. He sends all the treasure for the aid of the poor and needy. He walks into the wrong cave and finds that the robber had escaped and the treasure was missing too. Interesting. This means that the robber had no idea that the treasure was fake. Good thing that I threw a tracker in there to track his boss. Following the tracker's location, he comes in front of an old abandoned house where he finds the robber, the treasure along with the manager of the museum. I knew you were in on this. How could anyone know that the map was inside the wall? Why would someone print a copy of the map and moreover, give it to me? You wanted to reach there first and keep the treasure for yourself, but your plan has now flopped. Mayhul arrests both of them and the case is now officially solved. A bus was making its way on the road. The driver was troubled as today, he was responsible for collecting the tickets as well as driving the bus. As the bus reaches near a bridge, the driver starts collecting tickets from passengers. Can you guess why the bus didn't topple from the bridge while the driver was collecting tickets? Because the driver had parked the bus before beginning to collect the tickets. The bus reaches its stop and all the passengers disembark from it. But there was one passenger who had fallen asleep. The driver walks up to him to wake him up but as he puts his hand on the man's shoulder, he falls to the ground. He was dead. But how? And when? Detective Mayhul was called immediately to find out the answers to all these questions. As he reaches, he spots three buses in front of him. Which one of these is the murder bus? Can you guess? People are getting on the bus one. People are getting off of bus 2. This means that bus 3 is the murder bus. He walks towards the bus and goes inside it in order to examine the man's dead body carefully. Suddenly, he spots the man's belongings on the adjacent seat. He decides to go through it properly and instantly figures out how the man could have died. Can you guess? Notice that there is a bottle of poison which is half empty. This means that the man has surely consumed it. Blood is oozing out of his mouth too. I'm sure that poison is responsible for this man's death, but has he consumed it by himself? Or is someone else involved in his death? I'll have to find out soon. Just then, the man's beautiful and expensive looking bag grabs Mayhul's attention. He pulls it towards himself and realizes that it was locked using a password. But there was a hint at the front of the bag. So much security and a hint for a personal bag, something is definitely wrong. By looking at the clue, can you guess what the code is? The numbers are not added, but multiplied with each other. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Hence, for the code, 6 times 1 will be 6. Hence, the code is 6. Mayhul presses the correct button and manages to open the bag. He is left speechless by what he sees inside. The bag was filled with tons of cash and gold biscuits. Interesting. This means this man was a smuggler, but it is still unclear if this was a murder or a suicide. Mayhul then frisks him and finds a wallet in his pocket. Through his license in the wallet, Mayhul is able to find out his name and address. His name was Dan. Mayhul immediately departs from the crime scene and reaches the given address. But as he reaches the location and looks at the house, he was doubtful if the address was real. But why? Can you guess? It is unlikely that a person with so much cash and gold would live in a fragmented house like this. The address on his license would have been fake. Mayhul then comes across an old man who informs him that it was his house and he has no knowledge of Dan. Interesting. The case is getting more complicated with every second. I'll have to interrogate the rest of the passengers in the bus. Just then, Mayhul receives a call from Dr. Sunjana who informs Mayhul that Dan hadn't been killed by the poison found in his bag. The amusing part was that the bottle did not have Dan's fingerprints at all. Very very interesting. This means someone had strategically placed the bottle inside his bag to throw us off. But when and how? Only the passengers can now help me get to the bottom of this. 
Out of everyone, Mehul is suspicious of three people and decides to question them. The first man says, Sir, I was skeptical of this man from the beginning. He arrived in a luxurious sports car. Why did he even board the bus? I knew something was off. The second one says, Sir, I noticed him quite some times. He was looking very nervous and kept checking his mobile multiple times. The third one says, Sir, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw so much cash and gold. I just got up and sat at the back of the bus. Mayhul instantly figures out which one of them was lying. But how? Can you guess? How did the third man know that Dan was carrying so much cash and gold? This means he knows something crucial. He blurts out everything in front of Mayhul. He tells him that he grew greedy seeing the cash and gold, but he hadn't committed the murder. Mayhul obtains his fingerprints and sends them over to Dr. Sanjana. Soon, she calls Mayhul and tells him that the fingerprints on the bottle belonged to this man. The murder hasn't occurred using the bottle. This man planned to do it but someone beat him to it. But then where did the poison go? The man then tells Mayhul that two hours ago, the bus had taken a halt at a restaurant. That's where he saw the cash. He then transferred the poison to Dan's water bottle and placed it in his bag, so that it appears like a suicide. Dr. Sanjana then calls Mayhul once again and informs him that the poison administered to Dan was a slow poison. It takes almost two hours to kill the person. Very interesting. This means something happened in the restaurant itself. He quickly engines his car and leaves for the said restaurant. The car speed is at 100 miles per hour and the restaurant is 50 miles away. Can you guess how much time will Mayhul require to reach the restaurant? If Mayhul is covering 100 miles in one hour, then he will be able to cover 50 miles in 30 minutes. Within half an hour, he reaches the restaurant. He decides to check its CCTV footage. He is able to derive several hints through these four images and understands exactly what happened. By looking at them, can you guess? The man from the bus was sitting in front of Dan. Shortly after, he left his seat to use the loo. The color of the water has changed in footage 3. This means that the man administered poison in the bottle, while Dan was away. But as we can see in footage 4, Dan leaves without drinking from the bottle. Interesting. But then when was Dan poisoned? Can you guess? Notice that Dan had lunch in this restaurant. This means the poison was added to his food. But no one came near him the entire time he was there, according to the footage. Mayhul was sure that a staff member had poisoned Dan's food. He quickly makes his way to the kitchen. Here he finds four people working. Mayhul couldn't believe his eyes when he saw a particular person. Can you guess who? This is the man whom I met at the address. I found on Dan's license. The old man was scared out of his wits and tries to escape from the back door. Mayhul follows him at once and finds himself at a crossroads. Can you guess which route the man would have picked? This wall is quite tall, an old man couldn't have leaped over it so fast. This road is filled with mud and water, his footprints would have been visible if he chose it. This means he took this one. Mayhul runs at lightning speed and manages to catch the old man. Why did you murder Dan? He was a cheat and a fraud and used to engage in criminal activities like smuggling. He involved my son in these malpractices too. He gave my address as his and as a result, my son is paying the price. He's in jail now. I wanted to take revenge. Mayhul instantly puts the man in jail. The case was officially solved. Detective Mayhul rocks. In midnight, a birthday bash was going on inside a building. Just then, Lisa falls to the ground while dancing and succumbs to death. Detective Mayhul reaches the crime scene at once. It is difficult to decipher the cause of death by looking at the corpse. But why? Can you guess?
Notice that foam is oozing out of Lisa's mouth, but there is a mark on her neck too. This means someone could also have tried to strangulate her. This is why it is difficult to decipher the cause of death. He immediately sends off the dead body to Dr. Sunjana for a postmortem. Nahul then interrogates three of Lisa's friends present there. He first walks up to Michael. How did this happen? I don't know sir, I was in the washroom. I came running out when I heard people screaming. Nahul then asks the same question to Kevin. Sir I was sitting at the table, eating my food, when Lisa suddenly fell down while dancing. I don't know anything more than this. Henry then says, Sir the loud music at the party, gave me a headache. So, I was roaming outside. As soon as I got the news of Lisa's death, I came in running. Mayhul then goes out to the garden. Here he finds shoe prints of someone coming and leaving, but there seemed to be some difference in their pattern. By looking at them, Mayhul confirms that Henry was telling the truth when he mentioned that he was talking a walk in the garden. But how? Can you guess? The shoe prints of someone coming signify that the person was walking, while the shoe prints of the person leaving signify that he was running. This means that Henry was not lying and he did in fact run inside. But this doesn't mean that he could not have been the murderer. Mayhul then decides to check the CCTV footage of the building and he notices Michael got down the floor using the elevator. Michael said that he went to the washroom and that's on the same floor. Why did he go downstairs? Michael then tells him that there was another party on a floor downstairs. He went to meet his friends and ended up using the washroom there. Two parties in one building? Interesting. Very very interesting. But Mayhul was not fully convinced by Michael and was suspicious of him. Can you guess why? said that he came running when he heard people screaming after Lisa's death. But if there was a party going on, how did he manage to hear it amidst the loud music? Something is not sitting right and I will have to get to the bottom of it. Mayhul goes to the floor downstairs and asks the watchman to show him its CCTV footage. In the footage, Michael is talking to his friend at 801. The footage from 802 is missing and is available from 815. But it doesn't have any signs of Michael or his friend. Interesting. This means we don't have the footage of 13 minutes in between someone has messed with them. If Michael was at the party, who must have meddled with the footage? And why did they mess with the footage of the second floor? Interesting very interesting. The watchman then tells Mayhul that an engineer named Davis had come for a routine CCTV check from the company. He might have meddled with the footage. Mayhul then shows second floor's entire day's footage to the watchman but they fail to find Davis in it. Mayhul then shows him the footage belonging to the CCTV on Lisa's floor. A man was standing right beside Lisa, the watchman exclaims and points towards him. This is Davis. Mayhul then tries to spot Davis from within the people at the party. Davis isn't here but then where could he be? He isn't downstairs or here, and the building is locked. Where did he manage to disappear? There are two huge questions in front of Mayhul at this moment. Has Davis messed with the CCTV footage in order to save himself from being caught, or was he saving Michael? It was now vital that Davis is found immediately. The watchman then tells Mayhul about an open terrace on the third floor. He could be hiding there. Mayhul immediately runs to the open terrace but doesn't find Davis there. He does find a very important hint here. By looking at the terrace, can you spot the hint? A stool is kept near the wall of the terrace and it's covered with shoe marks. The wall also has these marks. Someone got on the stool and then walked on the wall. Mayhul instantly gets on the wall himself and starts following the footsteps. Soon, he comes across three rooms. These might be storerooms. Mayhul looks at the doors and understands that one of them was Davis's room. But how? Can you guess? Notice that all the doors are covered in dust. Even the knobs on them are dirty and dusty. Pay attention that the knob on the second one is cleaner than the others. How could this be possible? This means that Somon has used it recently. Davis, I know that you're inside. Open the door and come out. But no one opens the door. Mayhul takes a deep breath and pushes the door with full force and opens it successfully. 
What Mayhul sees next leaves him speechless. Davis is dead too. He then looks at Davis's mobile to look for clues and finds several pictures of him and Lisa. This means they were good friends. But then why did he kill her? Interesting. Very, very interesting. Mayhul then comes across a text message on Davis's mobile, which said, Kill Lisa or UB will be exposed. He then starts looking around in the room in search of more clues. Suddenly, he spots a very expensive looking necklace. Does this seem like a hint to you? What is a woman's necklace doing in Davis's room? He matches Davis's fingerprints to that on the necklace, but they do not match. This means that Davis's was accompanied by someone else. But who? And why did he kill Davis? And if Davis is dead, then who killed Lisa? The case is progressively becoming more complicated. Mayhul now has to solve four big cases. Who poisoned Davis? Who murdered Lisa? Why did Davis delete the CCTV footage? Who was blackmailing Davis? Just then, Mayhul receives a call from Dr. Sanjana. She tells him that the quantity of poison in Lisa's body was negligible and she has died because of it, but of strangulation instead. Davis was injected with the same poison that had been used for Lisa, but the quantity used was much higher for Davis. Mayhul then watches the party's CCTV footage and manages to spot an enormous hint. But what? By looking at this image, can you guess? The necklace that Lisa is wearing is the one I found beside Davis's dead body. This means that Lisa has been murdered using this necklace. Someone strangulated her using it and threw it near Davis. Mayhul then matches the fingerprints of Michael, Henry, and Kevin to the ones on he necklace. To Mayhul's surprise, Michael's fingerprints end up matching that on Lisa's necklace. Michael was scared out of his wits. Sir, I haven't murdered Lisa and Michael. I came here to meet Davis and he told me that someone had been blackmailing him. When I went to the room afterwards, I saw his dead body. I was petrified. Suddenly, someone threw a necklace inside from the window. I noticed that it was Lisa's and I was even more scared. I don't know anything more than this. Mayhul then checks out the CCTV footages of the party and realizes that Davis was killed by accident. But how? Can you guess? Notice that Lisa is holding a glass in footage 1, she takes a sip and keeps it aside in footage 2. Davis picked up the glass in footage 3 and drank it completely in footage 4. This means that the drink was poisoned. Someone wanted to kill Lisa and blame it on Davis, but he ended up having the drink himself. The real murderer must have witnessed this and hence they used the necklace to kill Lisa. This means that killer from in the party. He fast forwards some clips and realizes that 10 minu worth of footage was missing from here as well. It was during this time that Lisa was murdered. Mayhul compares the footage before the deletion and after and comes across a massive clue. What is it? Can you guess? Notice that the cap's position on Kevin's head looks different in both the images. This means he okay it off and wore it again, but why? Mayhul is suspicious and catches him immediately. Kevin then tells Mayhul that he initially wanted to poison Lisa but Davis ended up drinking it to completion. So, he had to use the necklace to strangulate Lisa and used the cap to hide it later. He was also the one blackmailing Davis and forced him to delete the footage. He was in love with Lisa but Lisa was into Davis. This is why he wanted to kill Lisa and blame it on Davis. Case officially solved. In a scorching afternoon, Mayhul was headed to cafe when he receives a call that a precious diamond has been stolen from the city's auditorium. Without a second thought, Mayhul takes a sharp turn towards the auditorium and speeds off to the crime scene. Upon arriving at the auditorium, Mayhul immediately interrogates the security guard. Sir, the diamond was safe here until this morning but it disappeared gradually. Mayhul then investigated with the auditorium manager. Who all came here since morning? No one has come here since morning, and I can't understand how the diamond disappeared. The security here was very strict, and we even had radar security installed. If someone entered, we would have received a signal, but that did not happen. Mayhul looked at the place where the diamond was kept, and it was painted green. He suspected that the manager was involved in the theft. Can you tell me why Mayhul thought the manager could be involved in the theft after seeing him? Look carefully and tell me your answer by commenting.
The manager's shirt also has the same green color that was on the stolen diamonds haul. Tell me the truth, are you also involved in the theft? No sir, why would I do such a thing? You can watch the CCTV footage if you want. I did go to that hall after the theft. Mayhul watches all the CCTV footage. So the manager was telling the truth. He went to the hall where the theft occurred, where this color must have been transferred onto his shirt. Mayhul watches the CCTV footage carefully. No footage was missing, and the diamond was also visible in the footage, but while watching, the diamond disappeared from there. How? It was not clear to him, and then Mayhul gets another call that the same type of theft has occurred at Diamond Palace. Mayhul immediately reaches Diamond Palace in his car, but he will have to solve a small math problem to enter inside. How many times does one repeat in counting from 1 to 100? So can you answer this? Quickly think and tell me your answer by commenting. Mayhul is a very intelligent spy. He immediately types 21 and enters inside the Diamond Palace. Logical army, if your answer is not 21, pause the video and think carefully. Mayhul, after speaking to the manager there, immediately rushes to check the CCTV cameras. But alas, from morning till noon, nobody had come, and the precious diamond kept safe and radar security was stolen. It was an extremely valuable diamond, indeed. How is it possible that someone could leave without being caught on the CCTV camera? There must be something fishy. Mayhul's hands don't seem to have any evidence. After this, Mayhul finds out how many diamond showrooms are there in this city. Then he comes to know that there is another palace in the city named the Golden Palace, and theft has already occurred in the other two palaces. Mayhul reaches the Golden Palace and meets the manager there directly. I am Detective Mayhul, and it appears that there could be a diamond heist in your palace. I implore you to activate all of your cameras and heighten your security immediately. And there Mayhul waits, with bated breath, for the thief to show up. He has been relentlessly pursuing this thief since the break of dawn, and his stomach growls in hunger as he hasn't eaten a thing. So, he takes out a packet of biscuits, eats it, and throws it in the dustbin beside him. After a few moments, all the diamonds in the palace disappear. Mayhul is bewildered and checks the CCTV footage, but there is no activity. How is this possible? The case has become very interesting. Suddenly, his eyes fall on the dustbin, and he immediately realizes that someone must have come here. Can you tell by looking at the dustbin if someone had come or not? Look closely and let me know your answer by commenting. When Mayhul had put his biscuit packet in the dustbin, it was completely empty. But now, there is also a chocolate packet in the dustbin. Someone had come and put the chocolate packet here after eating it. This means that someone had indeed come here. Mayhul quickly checks the CCTV footage again, but he cannot see anyone. This is beyond his understanding. Mayhul immediately sets out to meet the scientist Volvalea. The scientist had set up a maze to reach him. Can you tell which path leads to the scientist by looking at A, B, and C? The path to the scientist is B, and Mayhul takes that route to reach him. Mayhul tells the scientist about the thief, who cannot be seen on CCTV and is committing thefts. The scientist listens intently and then starts pacing back and forth. In this world, there is nothing like ghosts or supernatural things, and such an event is only possible through a time machine, which means that the time machine has been created. And only Professor Deck can do this job. We both were working on this project 10 years ago but we were not successful. Mayhul immediately reaches Professor Deck's house. Professor Deck's house was in a forest far from the city, he liked to live alone. Mayhul reaches in front of his house. Inside, Professor Deck was doing some research. Mayhul asked him about the time machine. Yes, I have made this machine and I can do whatever I want with it whenever I want, and I have stolen all the diamonds from the city. How did you steal the diamonds? I was in the Golden Palace at that time. You took the diamonds from there and I didn't even know. There was no image of you in the CCTV camera. How is this possible? Young boy, if you answer one of my questions, I will tell you everything. Please ask, sir. What is time? What is the definition of time? Sir, to continuously flow is the name of time, to never stop is the work of time. Professor Deck laughs out loud. I have changed this definition. Now, with the help of the time machine, I can go behind time as well. And he tells Mayhul how he stole the diamonds. With the help of a time machine, 
I can take myself back in time so that you can't see me today. He takes Mayhul with him to the same day at the Golden Palace with the help of his time machine. When the theft of the diamonds took place, Mayhul sees Professor Deck coming comfortably and taking the diamonds and throwing a chocolate wrapper into the dustbin at that time. And no one could see him because he was not in the present, but in another time. Mayhul understands the whole game. Sir, I respect your talent, but you are not doing the right thing by misusing it. Young boy, you don't know the value of money yet. Everything can be done with money. And I'm a genius. You won't even be able to defeat me. And he disappears. Mayhul quickly gets out of his car and reaches scientist Bulbilea, telling him everything. Ten years ago, we both made a time machine, but we could only go back to our past. If we make any changes in the past, it will affect the present. That's why we never used that machine. The scientist takes Mayhul to the time machine. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Now. I will go to the past with the help of this machine and find a way to catch Professor Deck, so that he will become his present, and he will be arrested by the police in the future. Mayhul goes to the past with the help of a time machine and arrives at the same golden palace where Professor Deck had committed the theft. After that, Professor Deck comes there while eating chocolate and throws the packet in the dustbin and starts lifting the diamonds, thinking that he is alone and no one is watching him. But Mayhul was there with full preparation and he catches him. However, Professor Deck escapes immediately to his future with the help of the time machine where he escapes from Mayhul's grip. Mayhul immediately goes to the Diamond Palace, which was his second past, to catch Professor Deck and waits for his arrival. But Professor Deck doesn't come. He comes one day after that day, which is in the future, steals and runs away, and Mayhul can't do anything. Now, Mayhul has one last chance to catch Professor Deck at the city auditorium. Mayhul arrives there two days early and plants hidden thorns everywhere. Two days later, Professor Deck arrives there, and Mayhul activates the thorns, causing him to fall and scream in pain. Mayhul catches him and destroys his machine, and the entire present changes. And Professor Deck is caught. The clock just chimed 12 and it's Alia's birthday today. Alia is quite excited. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. Oh my gosh, that must be Mayhul sir. He's here to surprise me on my special day. Alia rushes to the door and flings it open only to be met with a stranger. Stranger doesn't say a word, instead throwing a bag over Alia's head and yanking her towards them. Hey, what the hell is going on? Let me go. Stranger remains silent as Alia screams for help, but no one seems to hear her. Help! Somebody help me! Stranger forces Alia into a car and speeds off, leaving her alone in the dark. Alia's voice is groggy as she slowly opens her eyes and takes in her surroundings. Hello! Is anyone there? Please let me out! It's my birthday today! Alia screams and shouts to be let out, but there's no one there to hear her. Alia starts to get angry and kicks the door in frustration, but it hurts her foot. Ouch, that hurts. Wait, what's going on here? Mayhul sir was right. I need to keep a cool head and think logically. Alia tries to calm herself down and then realizes that the door she was trying to open was not actually a door. Logical army, can you tell why she thought it was not a door? Look closely. This is a wallpaper. Take a good look at his moving down. Alia doesn't understand who kidnapped her and where she is. I want to celebrate my birthday. All my friends must be waiting for me. Mayhul sir must be waiting for me. Alia looks around the room, searching for any clues or tools that could help her escape. Alia's eyes widen as she spots a small ray of sunlight coming from between some cardboard boxes. Maybe there's a way out of here. Yes, this is it. I can get out of here. Alia kicks one of the boxes and it falls over, revealing a window. Alia looks out the window and is shocked to see that she is on the top floor of a huge building surrounded by jungle. Oh no, I'm trapped. How did I get here? Who did this to me? I have to get out of here, and whoever kidnapped me will pay for this. On the other side, Detective Mayhul receives a call from Robert who tells him that his shop was robbed last night. As soon as he hears this, Mayhul jumps into his car and heads towards Robert's shop. He reaches the address that Robert gave him but finds three different shops there. Mayhul quickly realizes which shop could belong to Robert. Can you figure it out, Logical Army? Let me know your answer in the comments. People were shopping in the second and third shops, 
but the first shop was a mess with all the goods scattered around, indicating that the robbery happened in that shop. As Mayhul stepped into the shop, the air was thick with tension. And there, in the corner, sat Robert, his head hanging low as he muttered in a defeated tone. I am ruined, 5 lakh rupees were stolen. Mayhul reassured Robert, Don't you worry, my friend, I will catch those thieves. As he surveyed the scattered merchandise and broken shelves, his mind was working in overdrive. And then it hit him like a bolt of lightning, this wasn't just any ordinary robbery. It seems like the thief must be an enemy of Robert. Logical army, can you tell me why Mayhul thought that the thief might be Robert's enemy? Let me know your answer by commenting. Take a close look inside the shop, the salt packet has been torn, and even the cap of the oil bottle has been opened, causing all the oil to spill. Why would a thief waste his time opening the cap of a bottle? It means that he came with the intention to harm Robert. This confirms that the thief was definitely someone who had a grudge against Robert. Did you have any fights or arguments with anyone recently? Robert then tells him about a fight he had with four people in the past week. Mayhole notes down all the names and addresses of the people involved and leaves to investigate the case further. Little did Mayhul know, this investigation would lead him down a path of danger and betrayal. Honey had beaten up Robert badly during a serious fight, so Mayhul rushes to Honey's house first. As soon as he rings the doorbell, three men appear at the door. The tension in the air is palpable, as Mayhul's instincts go into overdrive. He quickly realizes which one of them could be Honey. Logical army, can you guess who among the three is Honey? Please let me know your answer by commenting below. Logical army, the first kid looks about 10 to 12 years old, so how could he beat up Honey? The third man is quite old, so that means the second man must be Honey. Did you beat up Robert a few days ago? Mayhole's voice booms through the small room as he stares Honey ah. down, his face contorting with anger as he starts talking back to Mayhole. Are you his sidekick? Get out of here quietly. Without a second thought, he slaps Honey hard across the face. I am Detective Mayhole. As soon as Honey hears Mayhole's name, he starts crying. I am sorry, sir. I didn't do anything, sir. The tension in the room is thick as Mayhul grills Honey for answers, determined to uncover the truth behind the robbery. Alia paced back and forth, frustration etched on her face. I'm so angry, I don't even know what to say. Memories of her last birthday flooded her mind. Her mother had made pizza, and Alia had danced with all her friends to the DJ. But now, on this day, everything had gone wrong. Suddenly, her phone alarm rang, and Alia began frantically searching for her phone in the messy room. Her heart raced as she finally found it under a table. Hey, my phone. Now I'm free. She immediately called Mayhul, hoping he would come to her rescue. Why are you calling me so early in the morning? I'm very busy right now. Sir, sir, I've been kidnapped. Please save me. Alia, stop joking around. Get ready and come solve the case. With that, he hung up, leaving Alia feeling hurt and alone. She called him back, insisting she wasn't joking, but Mayhul ignored her calls. Mayhul sir is very bad, I will never talk to him again. But then, she heard footsteps coming closer and quickly hid under the table. As someone entered the room, Alia grabbed their feet and shouted. Bravo, what an excellent move I did. Running faster than she ever had before, Alia descended the stairs and found herself faced with three doors. The first door led to a pond with water at minus 10 degree. The second path had two burly bodyguards ready to pounce on any intruder. And the third way was blocked by a massive pile of luggage, making it almost impossible to pass through. Logical army, can you help Alia for choosing the right door? Let me know your answers by commenting. Taking the second path meant getting caught by the fierce bodyguards. Choosing the third way meant spending precious time moving the luggage, only to face an even bigger obstacle in the form of a man upstairs. So, she decided to take the first path, because water at minus 10 degree means it's a frigid pond. Alia take the first door and quickly left the room. As Alia looked around, she found herself surrounded by dense jungle. She ran in one direction and saw water, and then ran in another direction and found water again. Oh god, on my birthday, I got stuck on this island. But suddenly, hope emerged in the form of a coconut tree in front of her. Without hesitation, Alia climbed the tree like a monkey and started throwing down many coconuts. She used a rock to break one of them and savored the delicious coconut water. 
Wow, this is so tasty. However, her moment of peace was short-lived, as a bear suddenly appeared. Alia grabbed a coconut and hurled it at the bear, shouting. Take it, take it. The bear slowly started moving towards her, and Alia knew she had to run. It's better to get out of here, otherwise today's birthday will be the last birthday. Without any delay, Alia started sprinting away from the bear. As Alia ran towards the only building visible on the island, she had no other option but to return to the one she had just fled from. And just as the bear started to retreat, she saw something odd. Logical army. Could you tell, what did Alia see, that struck her as odd? Let me know your answer in comment section. As she got closer, she realized that there was a tag on the bear's costume. It was just a fake bear trying to scare her. But little did she know, danger still lurked around the corner. Suddenly, a hand covers her mouth, and she feels a sharp pain in her nose as she inhales the pungent smell of chloroform. Alia's eyes slowly close as she loses consciousness. Over there, Detective Mayhul interrogates and visits the homes of the other three people who had an argument with Robert. Mayhul questions all three of them. The first man says, Sir, I have already forgotten about that matter. And besides, I have been out of town for the past week. Look at my train ticket. The second man says, Sir, I don't even talk to Robert anymore. I just arrived from Bangalore today. Look at my bus ticket. The third man says, Sir, I just opened the door of my house a minute ago. I had gone on a picnic tour for the past five days, so how could I steal from Robert Shaw? After hearing all three of them, Mayhul immediately understands which one of them is lying. Logical Army, can you tell me which one of them is lying? Let me know your answer in the comments. The third man is lying. Look closely, the candle is burning and has already burned halfway down, with the wax melted to half. If someone has just arrived, how could the candle have burned halfway already? And this man is saying that he just came home a minute ago, which means he is lying. Mayhul catches him and questions him, and the man confesses. Sir, Robert had insulted me in front of everyone, so I stole from his shop. If everyone starts doing this, the whole system will collapse. He hands him over to the police and heads back home. Alia's heart pounded as she woke up in an unfamiliar, dimly lit room. Where am I now? She looked around frantically. She spotted the city skyline outside the window and realized she was in the city. Oh my god, what's happening to me? Who's doing this? It's my birthday today, and it's ruined. With trembling fingers, she fished out her phone and dialed Dr. Sanjana's number. Doctor, I've been kidnapped. Please save me. But Dr. Sanjana laughed it off, thinking Alia was playing a prank on her. Alia, you're such a joker, but you can't fool me. Alia's frustration grew as she tried to convince the doctor, but to no avail. Desperate for help, Alia called the Buldilea scientist, who was out shopping at the time. He didn't pick up her call. The scientist had created a maze to get to his house. Logical army, can you guess which route leads to the scientist's house? Let me know your answer in the comments. Route C leads the scientist to his house. The scientist reached home and called Alia. Happy birthday, Alia. Alia told the scientist about her kidnapping, but he thought she was joking too. You have fooled me many times, but this time I will not be fooled, Alia. Alia became frustrated and threw her phone. I'll leave and show everyone what I'm capable of. No one understands me. In the room where Alia was trapped, there was a hanging curtain. When she removed the curtain, she saw a maze in front of her with three paths. Let's see what happens now. She took the first path and entered the maze. Inside, there was a tunnel-like path that was quite dark. Alia managed to cross the path somehow, but to her surprise, she ended up back in the same room through the second door. Alia went through the third door, but to her dismay, she ended up back in the same place through the first door again. Alia's frustration grew, Alia vented her anger on the door. However, she calmed down and realized that she had been going through the same door every time. Logical Army, can you tell Alia why she thought she was going through the same door repeatedly? Think about it and let me know your answer by commenting below. Logical Army, look closely, all the doors appear exactly the same, but their locks are different. 
In the second and third attempts, the first and second doors had exchanged places. So, when Alia tried the third door, she had actually gone through the first door again. Alia identified the paths and finally managed to cross the maze. Upon crossing the maze, Alia enters a room where people passing by on the road were clearly visible. Alia starts shouting loudly, but no one is there. Suddenly, Alia sees Mehul sir. Mehul was getting out of his car. Upon seeing Mehul sir, Alia jumps with joy. Mehul sir has come to rescue me. Mehul sir has come to rescue me. But wait. Mehul starts walking away. Alia shouts at him loudly, but Mehul ignores her and leaves. Alia becomes very angry. Now I won't work with Mehul sir. I will become Kushal sir's assistant. Then someone throws a note from the window above, IT was written in the note that, I am Alia and it's my birthday today, shout loudly, the door will open. Alia starts screaming loudly. Alia, my name is Alia, it's my birthday today. Suddenly, the door behind her opens, and Alia finds herself in a dark room. Suddenly, the room lights up, and flower balloons. Happy birthday to you. Oh my god, such a birthday surprise. Everyone starts holding Alia's hand and cutting the cake, and they start smearing cake on Alia's face. Alia hadn't even taken a bath today, so her face was very dirty. That's why Alia was hiding her face. Everyone was taking photos with her. Sir, you really scared me today. It was fun, right Alia? 